Good night, Heidi. Good night. Good night, Al. You think so? You insulted me 17 times. You're right. Great show. <laughs> Tim. Al. Hi, Heidi. Hi. Super episode. Right up there with Vila. Thanks, Wes. Thank you, President Davidson. <laughs> He's president of Ben for Tools, not the United States now. <laughs> so how are my friends in tool time? Beats me. I don't think you have any. <laughs> you know, Tim, you're as funny now as you were when we first started selling tools. I remember that. You know, Wes here was Benford's best number two tool salesman. Boy, the, I can't remember the guy's name that was number one. Who was the number one salesman? What was his it name? It was you, Tim. Was it me, number it one? It was you, but we all know who's number one now, don't we? Yes, we do, Mr. President. <laughs> you know, Al, I really enjoyed the What's New segment, and it started my little gray sales journey. Mm -hmm. Seems like it churned the hair right off your head then, huh? Hey! <laughs> hey! The hair's off limits, Taylor. It's off your scalp, too. Anyway, we just finished a prototype for a new reciprocating saw. I didn't know we were developing one. You didn't know I'd be your boss one day, either. <laughs> Gentlemen, the Binford 6100 with state-of-the-art electronic feedback control. Oh, I love that in a saw. Boy. <laughs> Look how thin she is, and she's light. And look at this, there's a pistol grip. <laughs> Down boy. I thought it would be perfect if you could give it a sneak preview on Friday's segment. There's a very good idea. Uh, we can see now why you're number one. Oh, thanks, Al. <laughs> well, back to work. Bye, Al. See you, Timmy. So long, Wessie. See you, Mr. President. Why don't you just glue your lips to his butt? <laughs> There's no need to be snitty. Besides, I think you're overlooking something very important that has just happened here. We got, got a, a new, new tool. <laughs> and then I had a library fundraiser meeting and I got this headache. I thought my head was going to explode. Mom, we're completely out of food. Thank you for caring. <laughs> Your father and I just went to the grocery store two days ago. How can there be no food? There's no food! <laughs> Gosh, you know, you guys, you're just like piranhas in blue jeans. <laughs> okay, um, 
I'll order a pizza for tonight, and tomorrow I'll go to the grocery store. Well, can you make sure the food is here by the time we get home from school? Well, why don't I just meet you at the bus stop, and I can serve you as you get off? <laughs> You're always thinking, Mom. <laughs> Here's what I'm thinking. Tomorrow I'm going to give you boys some money. Yeah, money. Yeah. And then I'm going to send you to the grocery store, and you're going to buy every single thing I tell you to buy and nothing else. Oh, man. Oh, man. And when I say potatoes, I don't mean potato chips, and milk does not mean milk duds, okay? <laughs> well, can we at least get something sweet? You could buy me some flowers. That'd be sweet. <laughs> hi, everybody. Oh, hi. How is the best gosh darn family in the whole world? You got a new tool, didn't you? Yeah! <laughs> Benford's coming out with a new saw. I get to promote it on the show, and tonight I get to try it out in the garage if you'll help me move the hot rod chassis out. Is it a power saw? You bet. I'll get the candles. I'll get the band-aids. <laughs> Are you still here? It's two in the morning. Come here, Jill. Look at this. You know what I found out when I took this thing apart? That she couldn't put it back together? <laughs> this is an inferior tool. I'm embarrassed to have in the garage breathing the same air as the rest of my stuff. <laughs> Honey, I know they're like little people to you, but get a grip. No, no, no. Uh, um... Well, look at these, look at these washers. These are plastic washers, plastic screws. I knew this was gonna happen when Davis had took over. He doesn't care about quality the way I do. No kidding, I saw his wife at a Christmas party. <laughs> Binford would have never made a tool like this. <laughs> For the length of the stroke isn't even half an inch. <laughs> well, that may be obvious to you and me, but, uh, <laughs> Davidson may not know that this is a bad tool. How can he not know this is a bad tool? But he's been sitting behind a desk for 10 years. No, you're right. And even when we were selling tools together, get this, he didn't know the difference between a spline shank and a two flute. <laughs> that was exactly my reaction. If you tell him that this is a bad tool, he may not want you to promote it. You think so? Yeah, I should go talk to him. Maybe you're right. I'm always right. <laughs> Why is that? Because I'm so smart. If you're so smart, Mrs. Magna Cum Lately, <laughs> would you help me put it back together? Absolutely not. See, I'm getting smarter all the time. <laughs> Here we are. Have a seat, and Mr. Davidson will be with you shortly. Well, thanks, Laura. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, Al, all of us here at Bidford love you. Well, I bet we both have a lot of fans around here. Well, like I said, uh, Mr. Davidson will be with you shortly. Why did we have to come here? You know I'm not good at confronting superiors. Now you got to speak up. If a kiss up like you has a complaint, he'll take it seriously. <laughs> Hi guys. Sorry I'm late. Hello, Mr. President. <laughs> Comfortable, Tim? Oh, how could I not be? It's it's so homey in here. <laughs> how are you guys? Uh, you want anything? We want you to scrap production on the 6100. I was thinking more along the lines of coffee or tea. <laughs> it's an inferior tool. Both Al and I agree. Is this true, Al? <laughs> I would like some tea. The point is, I took it home last night, 
and fiddled around with it. Al tried it this morning. The motor's really too small, Wes. There's all those plastic parts in it. Do you have chamomile? <laughs> the whole thing is cheesy and lightweight. Well, Tim, we feel that the lighter weight parts make it easier to use, particularly for the ladies. Ladies? Yeah, my wife was just remarking the other night. When are they going to make a reciprocating saw for me? Something small you could put in a cocktail purse or maybe hang it like a pendant. Maybe some drop earrings out of it. <laughs> With all due respect, Mr. President, I... Well, I did try it, and... And I, I felt that it wasn't up to Binford's usually high standards. Al, it's a perfectly fine tool. We just found some new, innovative manufacturing techniques. Don't you mean you found a cheaper way to make it, Wes? All right, forget all this stuff, okay? The basic design is there. I think with a few modifications, we got a great tool. All you need is a heavier casing, go from plastic to metal washers. Guys, I'm happy with the saw as is. Fine. Let's just see how happy you are when we will not promote the thing on tool time. Tim, it's very simple. Binford makes tools. Binford makes tool time. Your point? If the show won't promote our products, we have no reason to continue it. At least, not with you. Don't threaten me, Wes. <laughs> Ow. You can cancel my tea, sir. Mom, we're back! We got everything on the list. Everything? Well, everything except for the garlic gloves. Garlic gloves? <laughs> That's garlic gloves, honey. Oh, then we had marshmallow gloves for nothing. Uh-oh. What is all this stuff? There's licorice here, potato chips, chocolate covered peanuts. These things were not on the list. Well, we bought it with the money we had left over. You shouldn't have had any money left over. Well, we're smart shoppers. Yeah. <laughs> this fruit is bruised. Crackers are smushed. What's with this can of spaghetti sauce? Mom, it was half the price because it was denny. Great, we could have spaghetti al dente. It's a good idea. Did you buy anything that wasn't damaged? Yeah, the chicken. We couldn't find any dented ones. Why didn't you just throw it up against the wall before you got to the register? See, Randy, I told you we should do that. Well, thanks for trying. Hi, everybody. Back from shopping, how'd it go? There's no labels on these. <laughs> what is it? It could be succotash or dog food. Well, with the way Mom cooks, I don't think it makes a difference. <laughs> How'd it go with Davidson? Yeah. You know what they say, honey? A weasel is a weasel. <laughs> is a weasel. That good, huh? Well, I guess the bottom line is, is I either promote the tool or he fires me. What? Well, I don't think he can hurt Tim, the tool man, Taylor. Tim, he's the president of the company. He has the power to fire you. Oh, yeah. Well, who's he gonna replace me with? Borland? Al show now? Flannel time? Who's gonna watch that? <laughs> okay, tell me about this tool. Does it work? It works. Is it unsafe? No, it's not unsafe, but this isn't the point. Is this really about the tool, or is it about your problem with Davidson? I don't have a problem with Davidson. You think he's a weasel. I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> okay. If thought about Davidson and the tool is safe, are you really willing to lose your job over this? Binford has always stood for quality tools. This is a bad reciprocating saw. What's next? A, a rubber miter box? Styrofoam nails? Is there no way that you can compromise? Jill, 
A lot of guys watch the show and buy tools because I recommend them on the show. And it's a responsibility I don't take lightly. All right. All right, what? All right, I'm behind you, whatever you decide to do. Even if I lose my job, I've got to go back to selling tools on the road? I won't see you, but I'll be behind you. <laughs> That's why I love you. And you don't think I'm crazy? That's a separate issue. Remember the landing gear you fit in my plane yesterday? Did a good job, didn't I? I guess the glue didn't work. Oh. Can't figure that out. My thumb was stuck to the workbench for three hours. <laughs> well, I'll fix it again. You like me being Tim the Toolman Taylor, don't you? Yeah. You know, I also used to be a tool salesman. I was the best salesman Benford ever had. I know. How do you know? You told me a million times. I didn't tell you about being on the road, though. Staying in hotels, you get to make a big mess someone else cleans up after you. Does Mom do that? Yeah, but the chambermaid doesn't give you those nasty looks, you know? Get to eat all the food you want, get bloated and all gassy at night. That doesn't sound so good. Oh, but rental cars, you can do whatever you want to them. Commuter flights. Is that wing supposed to be doing that? Ah. <laughs> oh, boy, staying up late and talking to your kid by phone, never being home for holidays. I hated doing that. Dad, if you're our tool salesman, you'd never be home with us. I want to be home with you guys, and I want to do tool time. That's really the life I like. There you go. Stinks, Wilson. Well, Tim, you can't expect the compost heap to smell like fine perfume. <laughs> no, I'm referring to the situation with that Weasel Davison. It, it, it's a lose-lose situation. I either promote a tool that I, I don't believe in, or I risk losing my job. Mm-hmm-hmm-hmm. That is quite a pickle. Yeah, all right, Wilson. It's a real predicament. No, Tim, I was referring to the big dough between the coffee grounds and the eggshells. Wilson, could we? I'm sorry, Tim. You know, it was Robert Ingersoll, a 19th century lawyer, who said, it is a blessed thing that in every age, somebody has had the courage to stand by their convictions. A lawyer said that? <laughs> On the other hand, I'm reminded of a general named Pyrrhus. That's right. He was a Greek general who fought the Romans, and his army won the war, but he lost so many men, it might just as well have been a defeat. Today, we call that a Pyrrhic victory. Well, so what are you saying? That this might not be worth a fight? Well, it wasn't for Pyrrhus. It may be for you. You see, Tim, when it's a question of integrity, there are no easy answers. I could come back. <laughs> well, you're right, Wilson. This is really a pickle. And I don't mean that dill. <laughs> So, what are you going to do about the reciprocating saw? I'm going to do my job, Al. You're not going to promote it on the show, are you? What about your principles? I don't want to end up in a Pyrex victory, all right? <laughs> what? Does everybody know what time it is? No! 
That's right. Fit for Tools is proud to present Tim the Tool Man Taylor. <laughs> And welcome to Tool Time. I am Tim, the Tool Man Taylor, and you all know my assistant, Al Borland. <laughs> Today, we finish up What's New this week on Tool Time. Got a little surprise for you. How would you guys all like to see a top secret prototype of a new tool from Binford? Yeah. Yeah. Well, prepare your eyes, cover them if you're a child, because here we go. <laughs> Oh, he's right. Look at this. The new Binford 6100 reciprocating saw. Huh? Every tool Binford makes goes through a rigorous quality control system to make sure it's top of line. And the Binford 6100... bombed out big time. Al, if you want to walk away, I'll understand. I never walk away from a tool in need. <laughs> That's right. The Benford 6100 bombed out of every single test we threw at her. And I, and I bet you're wondering, who's responsible for making a tool like this? Well, it's the new president of Benford Tools, Wes Davis, and he's right over there. A man who doesn't mind a bad tool as long as it's made by somebody else. Because this is Benford on it, it's got to be the best. I think Wes Davison deserves a big round of applause. Wes, come on over here, Wes. Come on. It's because of this man you'll only see quality products in your hardware store. Wes, tell us a little bit about the problem you had developing the 6100. Please, tell us. <laughs> I'd be glad to, guys. Uh, we found that the motor was uh, a little underpowered. And the casing? And the casing would have been a little stronger had we used metal. Mm. Mm. What are you going to do with it? Well, in the interest of the consumer, I've decided to hold off production. <gasps> I mean, isn't this the kind of guy you want selling your tools? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I got an idea. Heidi, would you bring out the Benford uh, Big Boy ZX? Sure, Tim. Here on Tool Time, when we have a tool or a product that doesn't measure up to our quality standards, we give it a interesting farewell. <laughs> Heidi? <laughs> The Benford Tool Masher. Al, you want to take the honors here? I don't think so, Tim. <laughs> but perhaps Wes would like to. How about it, Mr. President? All right. Just shove it right in there. Watch your hands. <laughs> so proud of you. It took a lot of integrity for you to stand up to Davidson like that. Well, I'd like to say it was no big deal. No, it was a big deal. However, if you had lost your job, it wouldn't have been the worst thing. What do you mean? I'd have to go back selling tools beyond the road for 30 weeks. And the downside would be? <laughs> You'd miss me. Until Jake the pool boy dropped by. 
You don't have a pool. We get one. <laughs> Maybe I'll just stay home. Well, see, that would be okay, too, because since I'd be the major breadwinner, then you'd have to stay home and do the laundry and the cooking and shopping, cleaning. Well, 30 weeks isn't that long. <laughs> Well, I had two very interesting options, you see, because on the one hand, you would stay home and do the laundry, and on the other hand, I would get the pool guy. <laughs> oh, honey, I never trade you for anybody. Unless I could get a pool boy who did the laundry. <laughs> Three, two. <laughs> <laughs> what a scary. It's a loud theme song. <laughs> <laughs>